I'm Pastor Sarah, and together with all your Agape Kids teachers, we want to say it's so great to see you today and to have you worshiping along with us. Every time you show up for online service, you're telling God that you want more of Him. That's something God loves to hear and a request that He always answers. Well, today is our final Sunday in the Outpouring series, and you know what that means. Get ready to receive something more from the Holy Spirit today. I'm guessing you're probably not watching service alone today, so give whoever it is you're watching with a high five and ask them what they want to receive in service from the Holy Spirit. I want to receive the blessings, Korea, kindness, happiness, and the word of God and the outpouring of Jesus Christ and more, more power, more kindness to everybody. That's what I want to receive. I want to receive more intelligence from the Holy Spirit. I want to receive more grace from the Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Spirit to uh, give me knowledge to you. I want the Holy Spirit to give me the knowledge to be able to understand the Bible verse we need today. In service today, I want the Holy Spirit to fill me with more faith so that I can strengthen my relationship with God. Whatever their answer was, just turn that into a prayer right now. You've said it to each other, but now take a moment and say it to God. Tell Him what you're asking for and expecting to receive in His presence. Let me ask you a question this morning. What's the best way to worship? Standing up, sitting down, hands lifted, clapping, kneeling, lying flat? The answer is none of these ways are better than another way. What matters most in worship is not the outside actions, but it's your heart. The best way to worship is with your whole heart loving God, focused on Him, honoring and praising Him, for who he is. I worship God because he's holy and he fights for me. I worship God because he provides our needs according to his riches and glory. I worship God because he's patient and he gives me more chances than I deserve. I worship God because he loves me and he's the one and only true God. I worship God because he gave his only son to save us from our sin. I worship God because he created us. I worship God because I was made to worship Him and He's the great I am. I worship God because He is my great I am and He will set me from there. I worship God because He deserves our praise. I worship God because He's faithful to me and my family. You broke away the 
change, yeah Na, 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 na When Jesus came Na, 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 na When Jesus came When Jesus came Ransom me 
His grace runs deep While I was a slave to sin Jesus died for me Yes, He died for me Who the Son sets free Oh, is free
This is your time where you can pick up your take home papers, get communion, and pray with the pastor, all without getting out of your car. Finally, I'm excited to announce that Akafi Kids is having a raffle draw with some prizes just for kids. Yay! You can enter your name and to be part of the draw by emailing Akafi Kids at akafihousegana.org or sending a WhatsApp message to 054 We will do the raffle draw in two weeks, so send your name to me. That's all the news I have for you today. Keep staying safe. Keep loving Jesus. Keep loving others too. Have an agape fantastic service. Bye. As our K News host said, today is all about the outpouring of love. So I'm heading to Agape House to go and interview some people about love. Let's go. Okay, so what I can think about is have, dive, dove, um, no. Love. Hmm. Dove. Uh. Above. <laughs> no, I didn't even think of dove right now. <laughs> okay. Um. We have dove, glove, and shell. Helping others when they are in need. Uh. Being patient to people. Oh, definitely can show love to people by showing them that you care. Like, you know, talk to them, have a chat with them. Sometimes you just say, how are you? Then you move on. But sometimes you may just want to find out a little bit more about them. Maybe they may be going through something and they don't really feel like sharing it. But, you know, when you talk to them, then they get to open up and then they feel better and they realize, oh, somebody cares about how I feel. Okay, you can show love to other people by giving to them. When someone is in need, you can show love by supporting the person in any way that you can. The Holy Spirit is able to uh, remind us of how we also sometimes make mistakes. And so when other people make mistakes, we consider them and um, passionate, com be compassionate towards them. Oh, you know, sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's natural. Sometimes you don't feel like doing it. But maybe the Holy Spirit will remind you that, hey, you know, this person is also my child, you know. So because sometimes you see them as the person offending me or an average person around you, but sometimes the Holy Spirit reminds you that they are more than that. They're actually His children. And you also being a child of God, that makes you siblings in Christ. Okay, the Holy Spirit helps us in loving someone by um, praying for someone. When someone is in need or someone is going through troubles or terrible times, the Holy Spirit can just lay that person on your heart to pray for that person. Um, Jesus is the first person. Love him. Hmm. You know what? I'll say hmm. King Solomon? King David? There are lots of examples in the Bible, but then I would like to give a um, uh, popular person. Jesus Christ he died on the cross for us. That's one major act of love. Okay. <laughs> Let's play a game. We're back and ready to play a game. To play today's game, you need a raw egg. You also need some paper. And if you have some tape in your house, you can grab that too. Now we all know that eggs are fragile and pretty easy to break. So here's our challenge today. You need to try to wrap the egg up in some pieces of paper in a way that will protect the egg if it's dropped from a really high place. Now you can use paper and if you have tape, you can use that. But other than that, no box, no jar, just paper and tape. You can use one piece or a hundred pieces, as many as you want and you have. It can be thicker, it can be thin. Just do your best to wrap the egg up so that it will be protected and it won't break. Okay, 
somewhere in here is my egg. Now it's time to drop it. If you have a balcony or a staircase, go ahead and climb to the top of that and drop your egg off. If you don't, no problem. Just climb on a chair, hold your egg up as high as you can, drop it from there, and let's try it out. Unfortunately, my egg broke. Did yours? I know some people wrapped theirs better than mine, but even then, this was a pretty difficult challenge. Paper is not that strong, an egg is really fragile, and gravity always pulls things down. It's hard to keep the egg whole and protected. This activity reminds me of our lesson for today because we live in a world where it's easy to get hurt. In fact, sometimes it seems like it's easier to get hurt and to hurt other people than it is to protect others and to love them. Anger, fights, gossip, insults, unforgiveness, these see things seem to be all around us everywhere we look. It seems like that's just the way the world is. And boys and girls, this is why we need the outpouring of love from the Holy Spirit. God has a better plan for us and for our world and for our relationships with other people. God is love and he wants to put his love inside of us so we can show it to the world so they can know him and they can be saved. We need the Holy Spirit to put the love of God inside of us because it's hard work. Loving others doesn't come naturally, but it does come supernaturally through the Holy Spirit. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit makes it possible for you and me to love like Jesus. one in your heart. Oh, oh Leo, what's up? <laughs> oh, just doing some target practice. Dr. Evil has it coming to him. Ooh, is that why you're throwing dirt at his face? Is it because you're mad at Dr. Evil? Mad? Mad at Dr. Evil? No, super friend. After all he's done, I give up. I hate him. Whoa, whoa, Amiga, you know super friends are not allowed to use that word. I know, but... He just won't stop being evil, and I can't love him. Uh-oh, Amiga, is Dr. Evil calling? I wonder what evil plan is after this time. Oh. Yes, Dr. Evil, what do you want? Uh, super friend, Amiga, please help me. I'm sick and Dying. <coughs> Dying, Dr. Evil? Is this another <coughs> one of your evil Don't tricks? Don't look like I'm deceiving you. <coughs> no, I can feel the life leaving my body. Super friend, Mika. 
Super friend, I don't think we should believe him. I really don't like this guy. You know, but what if he's telling the truth? You know, super friends are supposed to do good at all times and be nice. Well then, I guess we have to go. Come on, hmm. let's check it out. This is Super Friend. Just a few years ago, he was a lonely man, without friends and without hope. Until one day, he met the greatest friend of all. Transformed by the power of Jesus' love, Super Friend dedicated his life to bringing friendship to others. Assisted by his able sidekick Amiga, Super Friend battles bad friends and brings good friendship to those in need. This is a story of their adventures, the adventures of Super Friend and Amiga. <laughs> those fools, they are so full of love, they will come here and fall right into my little trap. Oh, this will most definitely, certainly, positively be the end of Super Loser and Super Ugly. I have prepared my most deadly poison just for this occasion. <laughs> What is wrong with you, Dr. Evil? Oh, it hurts. Oh, it hurts. Okay, super friend, you better go get him some medicine. I'll stay here and take care of him. Okay, Amiga, remember, love at all times. Got it, super friend. Love at all times. All right, Dr. Evil, let's see what's wrong with your heart. Well, sounds okay to me. Let's, uh, let's get your feet up, make you more comfortable. Now maybe um, I'll pick up some things over here. Mm. That cough doesn't sound very real. Let me listen to that cough. Why are you... No, Amiga! Look out! It's poison! But love is. Oh, I'm so sorry. I repent of my evilness. I just. <laughs> oh, Amiga! You're alive! You're alive! <laughs> I must have switched the poison with the bell powder! Amiga, can you ever forgive me? I already have, Dr. Evil. I'm a super friend, and I will love you at all times, no matter what you do. How can I ever repay you? How about by coming back to the friend cave with us and learning how to be a super friend yourself? Let's go! I think I'm going to enjoy learning how to be a super friend. I never thought I would hear you say that. <laughs> I guess it's just proof that love is powerful. Hey kids, remember this week, you can be a super friend by loving at all times. So until next time kids, super friend and amiga and documentary evil over, over and, and out. Today I have with me a cup that has just a little bit of water in it. Now let me ask you a question. Can this cup hold more water? Oh yeah, it can hold a lot more water, 
but it has just a tiny bit of water in it. So this cup is not going to be able to give out water to a lot of other cups. It might be able to give a tiny little bit of water here, and it might be willing to share a little bit of its water here, but it can't give out the water to many other cups because there's just a little bit inside of it. Now, Boys and girls, this cup represents you and me, and the water inside represents our love. Because you see, without God's help, we don't have a lot of love. We don't have the ability to give love to many other people or to show love to everyone we see. Yeah, we may be kind to our friends and we may share a little love with our family members, but our love has limits on it. However, just like this cup can take more water, you and I have the ability to carry a lot more love than is inside of us. How do we get filled up with love? Through the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is on us and is in us, He fills our lives with the love of God. This is a love that have, has no limits. It's a love that keeps on filling into us so that we can give it and we can show it to everyone that we come in contact with. We can pour out the love of God to everyone we see, just like the Holy Spirit has poured God's love inside of us. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit makes it possible for me to love like Jesus. When we feel short on love, when we find it difficult to love, we can ask for the Holy Spirit's help to fill us up with Christ-like love. And when the Holy Spirit fills us up, then we are able to love everyone with the love of God. It's so important that we learn to be filled with and to walk in the love of God. Jesus said in John 13, 35, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. You see, love is what shows the world that we know Jesus, that Jesus truly is real, and that he really saves. We've been talking about Holy Spirit fire, Holy Spirit power, Holy Spirit grace, and other people will see those things in our life. They will see, yes, so the Holy Spirit makes us full of fire and living a holy life. They will see the Holy Spirit gives us power and victory and He gives us grace to do difficult things. But there's something different about Holy Spirit love because Holy Spirit love is not just something that people see in our lives. It's something that reaches out from us to them and they feel it and they experience it in their lives. It changes them as well as us. I have with me two eggs in my hand. One of these eggs is real, one of them is fake. Now as you look at them, it's probably not too obvious which egg is real and which egg is fake. You can't tell by seeing from a distance what's real and fake. You would need to come close, you would need to feel them, you would need to hold them, shake them, and you would probably even need to slam them on the table and see which one was real and which one was fake. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that this is the fake one. I can bounce it on the table and it doesn't break. Not going to try that with this real egg. But this is an example that helps us understand how important Holy Spirit love is in our life. People don't just see love, they experience it. We show kindness to them, we give mercy to them, we reach out and do something extravagant for them and all of a sudden their heart is impacted by the love of God and they say, wow, this truly is real. God is real. His love is real, not just because I've seen it from a distance, but because I felt it in my own life. Love proves we are genuine. Our world really needs love and they need to see God's love inside of us. Now a great example in the early church in the book of Acts of someone who was full of Holy Spirit love was the Apostle Paul. When we first are introduced to the Apostle Paul in the book of Acts, actually he's a man full of hate. He hates Christians, he hates people who uh, follow Jesus Christ, and he is determined to even kill them, and he's doing this terrible persecution against them. But then Paul meets Jesus in a radical way, he gets saved, he gets filled with the Holy Spirit, and all of a sudden we see this man who was hating Christians transformed into an incredible follower of Jesus with extravagant love. He loved people, he wanted to reach them, he wanted to teach them about Jesus, he wanted to help them get free and live good lives, live godly lives. And Paul begins to show love even to people who hate him back, even to people who persecute him. 
You see, Paul would travel around telling people about Jesus and he was doing miracles and doing good works. But so many times in the places that he went, he was beaten because people didn't like what he was saying. He was imprisoned. He was even stoned to death once and God brought him back to life. But Paul did not give up on these people who treated him terribly. He would go back to places where he had been persecuted, where they'd insulted him. And he would once again try to reach them with the gospel and tell them about Jesus. Paul wrote a letter to a church in a city called Philippi. This letter is part of the Bible, it's God's word, and it's the book of Philippians. And now Philippi was a town where Paul had actually been put into prison. He'd been accused and thrown into prison unjustly without a trial. He'd been treated pretty terribly in Philippi. And Paul writes this letter to the church in Philippi, to the Philippian people, and this is what he says. He says, God knows how much I love you and long for you with the tender compassion of Jesus Christ. You see, Paul loved these people with the love of Jesus Christ, even if he'd been treated terribly there. Paul cared for them. He prayed for them. He never stopped thinking about them and caring how they were doing and whether they knew God. This kind of supernatural love can only come from the Holy Spirit. God used Paul to write the words of 1 Corinthians 13, where the Holy Spirit kind of love is described. And this is the love that the Holy Spirit gives us. Listen. Paul explains that love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous of what other people have, and it does not brag or act proud. Love is not rude, selfish, or quick-tempered. Love doesn't keep a list of all the wrong or bad things everyone has ever done. Love does not find happiness in evil things, but is delighted by the truth. Ultimately, love is outward, giving, and selfless. It's no coincidence that these descriptions of love also describe Jesus. Jesus is love. My challenge to you is to let God fill you up with that kind of love and then give that love out to other people. As we end our outpouring series today, I want you guys to know that the Holy Spirit is ready to put all of these good things inside of you. Fire, power, grace, love. But you have to be willing to receive them. You have to let the Holy Spirit work inside of you and change you. Inside this cup here, I've got a blue piece of blue tissue paper and it's dry it's not wet and i'm going to put this cup inside this basin of water now i turn it upside down and as i put it in the water something surprising is happening the paper inside the cup is not wet at all it's totally unaffected and i'll show you i'll pull the cup out and you can see the paper is dry no water got on it why was that? Because the cup was already full of air as it entered into the water. The air did not allow any water to enter inside of it. And I want you guys to know it's easy for us to be surrounded by the things of God. We go to church and we watch service online and we're in a Christian family and we're surrounded by the Holy Spirit outpouring, but then you don't let God change the inside of you. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit is not something we experience on the outside. It's letting God search our hearts, show us where we are wrong, and give us the supernatural help and strength to be changed, to be people of fire, strong grace, amazing power, and supernatural love. Now is a good time to talk with your family about what we have just learned. A family discussion can really help you understand and apply today's teaching. But before we talk about any questions, you've been listening for a while, so I think you need to get your tongue warmed up to do some talking. So here's a tongue twister for you to try out. Try saying it three times fast. Lovely Lily loves lovely laced lilies. Here we go. Lovely Lily loves lovely laced lilies. Lovely Lily loves lovely lace lilies. Lovely Lily loves lovely lace lilies. <laughs> lovely Lily loves lovely lace lilies. 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 Lovely 
lady loves lovely ladies. Lovely lady loves lovely ladies. Lovely lady loves lovely ladies. Lovely lady loves lovely ladies. Lovely lady loves lovely ladies. Lovely lady loves lovely ladies. Lovely lady loves lovely ladies. Lovely Lily loves lovely lace lilies. 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 Lovely Lily loves lovely Lovey Lily love lo Lovey Lily loves lovely lace lilies. Lovey Lily loves lovely lace lilies. Lovey Lilies love lovely lace lilies. <laughs> lovely Lily Lovely Lily loves lovely lace lilies. Lovely Lily loves lovely lace lilies. Lovely Lily loves lovely lace lilies. Question number one. When is it easy to love people and when is it hard to love them? Question number two, why does God want us to love others? Question number three, what kind of love should we have for other people? Describe it. Question number four, what happens to you when the Holy Spirit puts God's love inside your heart? final part of our family discussion is going to be a scripture Bible study. I'm going to share a scripture with you and then I want you to discuss it as a family. Ask yourself, what does it mean? What is it telling me to do? What should change in my life because of this scripture? The scripture is Romans 5 verse 5 and it says, God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Enjoy your family discussion. As we wrap up our service today, remember that our memory verse is 1 Corinthians 13 verse 5 and it says, Love does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Let's watch some motions for the words in this verse to help you remember it. Love does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it takes no record of wrongs. 1 Corinthians 13, 5. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Love does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. And does not keep record of wrongs. Love does not dishonor. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It does not keep any record of wrongs. 1 Corinthians 13, 5. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Love does not dishonor others. It is not self seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Bye! <laughs> I have really enjoyed our outpouring series and I hope you have too. What is one thing you will always remember from these lessons on the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? One thing that I'm going to take with me from this lesson series is that anytime I'm finding it difficult to do something, difficult to love, difficult to share, difficult to walk in grace, difficult to overcome something, what I need to do is go to God and ask for a greater outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Holy Spirit in me is all I need to live, to love, and to serve God. Let's close today's service and our outpouring series with a word of prayer. Father, we are so thankful to you that you've given us your Holy Spirit. We've learned over these past few weeks that your Holy Spirit puts a holy fire inside of us, gives us grace and power to overcome the enemy. And today we've learned that your Holy Spirit gives us love. Father, it can be difficult to love others. It can be difficult to truly represent your love on earth. But we know that we're not alone. We have the Holy Spirit. He's been poured out to shine your love in our hearts. We pray that each and every one of us would surrender to you, put away bitterness and unforgiveness and anger, and we would allow your love to work in us and through us to the world around us. Our world needs your love, Lord Jesus. Let it shine in us 
through the Holy Spirit. May we always walk in His outpouring. Bless each and every boy and girl as they walk this week in your spirit and in your love. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have an awesome, agape, kids-tastic service. Bye.